Films frequently have theories assigned that helps enhance their mystique. Is Blade Runner's Deckard a replicant being a prime example? But every so often a fun theory pops up that redefines a movie, and people are so desperate to share, write about, and discuss it before considering that it could be completely baseless and directly contradict what's set up in the film itself. I'm Ben from What Culture, and here are eight popular fan theories that completely ignore the movie they're about. Number 8. How can E.T. be in Star Wars' universe and our own? Steven Spielberg threw a few Star Wars references into E.T., and this was eventually repaid in The Phantom Menace, which featured several of E.T.'s species in the Senate sequence. But wait, does that mean that the movies are in the same universe, with E.T.'s home really that galaxy far, far away? It makes some semblance of sense, actually. When E.T. chases after a kid dressed as Yoda in E.T., he's not just doing it because it looks like an alien, he's doing it because he recognises the species! Although the fact that the kid is dressed as Yoda for Halloween should really tell you everything there is to say about this theory's validity. Star Wars exists as a movie in the E.T. world. Number 7. Bruce Wayne survives in The Dark Knight Rises because, well, we see him. When Alfred sees Bruce in that cafe in Florence at the end, it's all in his imagination. Bruce blew up in the nuclear explosion, saving Gotham, but his butler couldn't cope with letting another Wayne die and worked a happy ending in from his mind. Logical motivation, yes, but completely out of step with everything else in the film. Nothing in The Dark Knight Rises suggests this scene is anything but what it is, meaning that the final scene is intended to be exactly as it's shown. Stop deriving meaning from nothing. Number 6. Ferris Bueller has to be real because he exists without Cameron. So basically what people seem to think is that Ferris Bueller, the eponymous hero of Ferris Bueller's Day Off, is merely a figment of best bud Cameron's imagination, except that ignores that the movie isn't told from Cameron's perspective, it's from Ferris's. He's the one breaking the fourth wall, he's the one Dean Rooney spends the day trying to track down. Hell, Cameron doesn't even appear for the first five minutes. The movie opens and closes with, you guessed it, Ferris. Number 5. The movies repeatedly disprove that James Bond is a code name. Every time a new Bond movie comes along, someone inevitably pipes up to say James Bond is actually a code name. This explains how you can have a series span 50 years with the same character who changes looks and never ages. Yeah, it's a nice way to place all the Bond movies in a single continuity, but it's just not true as confirmed by Skyfall's tombstones. Clearly bearing the names of his parents, they confirm Daniel Craig's character's birth name is Bond, something that seemed to feature explicitly to put this theory to bed. Number 4. The Road Warrior explicitly tells us that the feral child doesn't grow up to be Tom Hardy's Mad Max. The basic idea here is that Tom Hardy's Max isn't the same character as Mel Gibson's from the original movies, but is instead the feral child from The Road Warrior. There are lots of little pieces of evidence that suggested this, including the character's movie-long reluctance to reveal his name, the presence of the first sequel's music box, and the general degradation of the world into an even more hellish desert while the hero had stayed the same age. How else can you have things work? Okay, so it's a cool concept that advances the idea of the Mad Max character turning him into even more of a nameless nomad of the wasteland, but it totally ignores everything we know about the feral child, as at the end of The Road Warrior, it's revealed that he became the leader of the film's oil-hoarding tribe. Number 3. These people aren't the Doctor because that requires ignoring everything. Here lies the suggestion that Christopher Walken in Click, Mary Poppins, Willy Wonka, or James Bond are really Time Lords. It normally circles around the characters being ethereal and all-knowing beings with some odd abilities in what otherwise appears to be a fairly realistic world, which seems to assume that Doctor Who has a monopoly on contemporary set fantasy. Even if it wasn't awful thinking, this totally misreads the show the whole theory's based on. For starters, we know many facets of the Doctor's timeline and the order of his many faces, so that's him out as any of these characters. And when you consider that he's something of a Time Lord renegade, mocked by his people for loving Earth, specifically council flats in London and places within a 50 minute drive from Cardiff, it seems odd to suggest there'd be another of his species doing the exact same thing. Number 2. R2-D2 and Chewie, being rebel spies, forget everything else in the movies. In the original, R2-D2 wasn't just looking for Obi-Wan, and Chewbacca wasn't just chilling with Han. Both were rebel spies, keeping tabs on Luke Skywalker and attempting to shape wider galactic events. However, R2-D2 is explicitly on a secret rebel mission anyway, and suggesting that the two main characters who don't speak English have more to them seem to be incredibly desperate. It's a theory that gets so caught up in finding hidden meanings that it forgets what's on the surface. You can read the films this way, but you have to contrive an alternate explanation for every single scene that those characters then feature in. The only positive it really offers is that it explains why R2 and Chewie don't blab about all the prequels events straight up, although, again, from watching the movies, neither is actually privy to anything major. 
Number 1. The humans turn monsters into toilet seats theory is based on a lie. In Partysaurus Rex, a so-so Toy Story short where Rex becomes king of the bath toys, we see Bonnie's toilet seat has an oddly suspicious blue and purple spotted pattern. It's obviously a shout-out to Sully from the Monsters movies, which makes total sense. Pixar loves teasing upcoming movies, and Partysaurus Rex came out a year before Monsters University. Turns out that this joke isn't just a harmless easter egg, though, but a clue to the darkest joke in Pixar's history. Back in the original Monsters Inc., at one point Randall and Sully discussed the human world, with a chameleon lizard claiming, I heard human skin monsters and make toilet seats out of their fur, to which the latter replies, that's nonsense. So that toilet seat cover was actually Sully. Oh my. But, and this is a really big but, that scene doesn't exist. Nowhere in either movie does any character talk about toilet seats, let alone Randall and Sully having that chat. Don't believe everything you read on the internet. And that's our list. Make sure you subscribe to the What Culture YouTube channel for more lists like this, and don't forget to visit whatculture.com for daily news and articles. I'm Ben from What Culture, and thanks for watching.